Now, while the incident in Delhi, the rape victims, the rape survivors tragedy in Delhi might have galvanized the nation, remember, this is a problem which has fronted women across India. In our continuing series, here's another story from two years ago. A software company employee, Naina Pujari, was found raped and murdered in Pune. The accused was arrested, but he managed to flee from police custody. Her husband, Abhijit Pujari, now speaks out about the delayed justice and careless attitude of the police. <laughs> In 2009, uh, incidents uh, were happening with me. But uh, after the case going, in um, 2011, in September, the main accused was from the hospital, actually, from the jail. After that, I was able to get to the police's hands. I was able to get to the police's hands. I was able to get to the police's hands. I was able to get to the police's hands. I was able to get to the police's hands. I was able to get to the police's hands. उसको ढूंढ रहे मिल जाएगा डेढ़ साल हो गया अभी तक मुझे तो कोई रिजल्ट सामने नहीं आया और मेरा केस ऐसे ही चल रहा है हमारे केस जल्द निकल जाए और हमें थोड़ा सा जस्टिस मिल जाए इसलिए हम लोग डिमांड करते हैं कि फास्ट ट्रैक में ले लिया जाए या जल्द से जल्द उनको पनिशमेंट मिल जाए मिल, मिल जाए लेकिन ऐसे होता ही नहीं इम्प्लीमेंटेशन के ऊपर मुझे लगता है कि सिस्टम सीरियसली नहीं सोचती है इसलिए हम लोग इस इन चीजों से सफर होते हैं, बहुत बैड से सफर होते हैं। Let's the big question then ask: Street protests a turning point for making India safer for women? Joining me now, Maya Daruwala, director of the Commonwealth Human Rights Institute, which has taken up police reforms in a petition to the Supreme Court. Joined by Sunita Krishnan, co-founder Prajwala, which works among women who are often subject to serious crimes. Justice Mukul Mudgal, retired Chief Justice of the High Court of Punjab and Haryana, and Himanshu Rung, Commissioner of Police Crime in Mumbai. Appreciate all of you joining us. I want to start with you, Ms. Krishnan, because you've gone through terrible trauma yourself. You fought back and you started your own NGO. Do you believe anything will really change as a result of the protests of the last week? Someone has sent me a, an SMS just now. What about the numerous other cases? What about all those who are raped in small states and small districts? Will their case ever be heard as a result of these protests? Do you believe this is a turning point, ma'am, or not? I don't know whether this is a turning point or not. Uh, one, it gives me some kind of hope that at least today India is waking up. Uh, I work in Hyderabad. And right now, in the Lofor Hospital, just four kilometers from where I'm sitting right now, a five-year-old child is battled her life, uh, raped by four men in Bidar. Every day, children and women are getting raped in different parts of the country. Nobody has woken up when they were getting raped. Now, uh, with this huge outrage in Delhi, at least I'm hopeful that there is some kind of awakening. But what it will all it lead to? I have my own reservations. You, you have your I, own I, reservation. Really what, what, what is your reservation? What is the big reservation that you have as someone, as I said, who's gone through the trauma herself and today is looking at these images? What is your big reservation? My biggest reservation is the apathy of the system. So much is happening. There's huge numbers and world of people out there, uh, outraged, uh, showing and indicating their protest. But yet, state and the system is so silent. You know, what, what do we need to do to wake these people up? How okay. many children, how many women, how many people have to be raped before they say, yes, we're going to do something about it? All this kind of platitudes that we are listening for the last one week, I'm, I'm seriously disturbed from within and absolutely reserved that something will be done to cause so, so, okay, protest okay, and so then you, life is you back don't to believe, normal. You don't believe in the government assurances. I'll come back to you, Sunita, in a moment. Himanshu Roy, you're hearing what Sunita is saying, that there is an apathy in the system. In that sense, is, there a, is this a wake-up call for the police? Will the next time someone is sexually assaulted or harassed, the police file a proper FIR, will ensure a conviction? Or will the constable on the beat say, you know, boys will be boys, men, men? Will he think twice? Is this a wake-up call? Uh, good evening, Rajdeep. Good evening. The constable has never said that. An incident of this nature, as brutal as this, as heinous as this, has shocked the conscience of the entire nation and has shocked the system. Even hard-nosed police officers are surprised and 
by what we see and what we hear. If the outrage, the anger can be channelized to make positive changes in the system, to ensure better delivery of justice to victims of violence and sexual assault, then and only then will the trauma, the tragedy, the sacrifice of the victims not be in vain. But, but Himan, Himan, sorry to interrupt. Are you telling me that police, you, you said those are not words used by the beat constable, that men will be men. Are you telling me that the police are gender sensitive, your Joint uh, Commissioner of Crime in Mumbai? Uh, do you believe that when a woman, let's say, late in the night comes, wants to register a complaint against alleged sexual harassment, that the police in general tend to be supportive? Yes, I would venture to say that we are not as bad as we are made out to be. I will also add that Rajdeep, the constable, comes from the society and when we recruit him, he inherits the same biases, the same attitudes, the same political approach, the same gender bias which is which is there in the typical male in this yes. country. Therefore, the first challenge that we have as police leaders is to make him unlearn, to remove these biases and attitudes when he comes to do his job. Right. We have various ways of doing this. We have various trainings, gender new training. We is it, have is it soft working? skills. We, is, we, is it working? Let me, let, let me, let, you know, the question, uh, let me take what you're saying. You're, you're, you're telling me what would, in many world, people would believe is an ideal system. I'm not denying that, you know, this cannot become an occasion for police bashing, that there are good police officers and there are not so good police officers. There's good media, not so good media as well. But Maya Daruwala, Hearing uh, 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 Himanshu Roy, you fighting for police reform, you put it before the Supreme Court and yet it's not being acted upon. Do you believe a lot of what we say in television studios remains limited to uh, uh, television studios, pious platitudes out there, police reform is still not being acted upon? Of course it's not being acted upon. The, six years ago, Yes. The, the, in this Prakash Singh judgment, there is a holistic uh, guidance given about what reform should look like. Absolutely clear. Everybody knows about this. And you talk about apathy. I would rather use the word resistance. It is not apathy. It is resistance to reform. And the res resistance to reform comes from being able to have power without the accountability that goes with it. But now, that's primarily the police. He, he, that's primarily the political leadership which doesn't want to make the police autonomous. Let's be honest. We can't exactly, blame the police for the problems exactly, created by our politicians. No, 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 excuse me. It, the whole thing is about governance. We can't separate one from the other. Right. The Supreme Court has said, the Supreme Court has noticed Yes. At the instance of these police officers who went to court, like Mr. Prakash Singh, yes. that there is far too much illegitimate control over the police. That, that, uh, that control is way beyond what it should be, what the relationship between the political executive and right. the police should be. Right. So they have given you a method to do it. Said, have a state security commission. Define the role of the politician. Define the role of the police leadership. Yes. Put it down on a piece of paper. Make it into legislation. And that's give not the management of the police back to the police. That's not. But give the it management. It is such a cozy relationship. Uh, it is such a cozy relationship okay. that they're not prepared to do it. Okay. Let me let me come to the other point. Many this, believe. This many race, believe. Many believe this that this will become a turning point. waiting to happen. Okay, this will become a turning point for making India safer for women. Mukul Mudgal, as a former uh, Chief Justice, lies in the criminal justice system. We can call today for the hanging, the chemi chemical castration of those involved in this incident. But there are any number of rape cases, as Ms. Claire pointed out, where people get away. Even with fast-track courts, will anything change unless the entire system of investigation, of public prosecutors, of filing FIRs, Will any of that change, sir? Let's be very, very yeah. honest today. No. No, look, there's one thing. This incident has triggered off, you know, it's uh, a chain of events which will leave form to some extent. 
Now, it should not only be confined to Delhi. Delhi is a city state. Yes. It should spread all over India. There should be uh, fast track courts for sexual offenses all over India. Secondly, the trouble starts when an Eve teaser gets away. Yes. Because the Eve teaser is not looked at seriously by anyone except the complainant. And it is the Eve teaser who grows up to be a st when he's not stopped. So, Eve teasing incidents where women are brushed. Yes. Women are uh, pushed. Women, women are uh, imposed upon. Such events yes. should be taken seriously and action taken. Sir, but, we, and, sir, uh, sir, but please tell I me, given the quality of public prosecutors in many of these cases, given, dare I say, sir, the quality of district judges and session judges in many of these cases, does that happen? The fear is that at the district and session ju ju judge well, level, where many of these cases come, the kind of judges that you have, the kind of quality of public prosecutors mean that those accused often get away. Will that change as a result of these protests today? Look, uh, look, the quality of investigation has to be improved. The forensic evidence has to be applied meticulously. And of course, the quality of prosecutors. Most of them are appointed for political reasons by the political party in power, yes. wherever they, it is. Yes. All states. Yes. The public prosecutors should be entirely on merit. Why is it in high profile cases you get the best laws to be public prosecutors? Why not in every case? Right. Why not in a case of a rape of a girl in a remote village in UP or Bihar? Should there be a public prosecutor of merit? Why should it only be in high profile cases which uh, deservedly Point. get media attention? You know, there are hundreds of cases where it doesn't come to light. You know, that is precisely the problem. Sunita Krishnan, you're hearing this from a judge, you're hearing this from a top police officer, you're hearing this from an activist who's been fighting uh, uh, for police reform. What's the sense you get? Will this be limited to a studio? Or will this all change as a result of these street protests? Are we being too cynical at a time when there is this great energy and the government itself now finally seems to be responding? You heard the Home Minister today saying even VIP security we are ready to review. Um, Rajdeep, I think time only will say whether all these platitudes are going to become action or not. Yes. Today, it sounds to me like a platitude. I was raped at, I was gang raped by eight men at, at the age of 15. And for the last 25, I've been listening to these uh, wonderful statements from wonderful people in different forums. Now, uh, very publicly in the media, but uh, uh, before mostly in seminars and conferences and meetings. So, uh, I tend to become more cynical, meaning of all these words. Uh, Let's start putting a time frame. Are our women and children important at all? Are our lives important at all? Are, is our state important at all? Do we matter at all in this country? These are, I think, very primary fundamental issues that we need to take. And for me, this is not time for dis discussion. What, what, what is the one thing uh, you, you're saying the time action. for discussion and platitudes is over? What is the one thing you would like to see change as of tomorrow morning? sex offenders directory in any state, in every town, in every village. Let's start with, like Justice Mudgal said, the Eve teasers. Can we have a directory databases of all the sex offenders in the country, the reported cases? Can we start creating an environment of deterrence? That is something very simple. Each one, each, every police station can do it immediately. Himan Churoy, just matters. Himan Churoy, can we have a tree of all sexual offenders? Do you, do you believe this is a possible implementable, implementable suggestion as of tomorrow morning? Rajdeep, this is music to my ears. As you know, every police station had or used to have a rogues gallery. Yes. We used to put up all criminals, their photographs in the police station under the categories of crime, robbers, dacoits, pickpockets and so on. Yes. This was struck down in a PIL filed by a human rights activist and now in Maharashtra no police station is allowed to have a rogues gallery. We are taking these, these, some of these issues to such ridiculous extents yes. that it is now becoming difficult to police and provide safety and security to very citizens who we seek to serve. We must have such a directory. We must shame such people. It must be available not only on the police station, but it must be on the Mumbai police and every police force's website. Right. And every citizen has a right to know that who are these shameful offenders and they should have social ostracization and boycott. I have no doubt about it. Okay, you, they should be socially ostracized and boycott. Let me take a break at this point. I'll get final because suggestions. What? I'll, I'll, yes, 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 Ms. Krishnan. Quick because response. That is what the society does to the victim. Okay.
Okay, point taken, ma'am. Let me take one last break and then come back to get final suggestions. What would you like to see come tomorrow morning? It's Christmas tomorrow. What would we like to see as a Christmas gift, perhaps, to the women of the country? Back in a moment on this special. Welcome back. These protests really trigger a revolution that will make India a safer place for women. Special panelists have joined us. I'm going to give you all just 30 seconds each to tell us what would you like to see come in, in terms of change come tomorrow morning. Let me start with you, uh, Maya Daruwala. What was the one thing you would like to see that you believe genuinely can happen tomorrow morning instead of all the platitudes that we've heard from our netas and, 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 and from us and others? What do you, would, would you genuinely like to see change tomorrow morning? Nothing is going to change tomorrow morning, but it would be nice to see the police admit that they are performing under power and very, very often they are performing illegally and they are performing wrongly and that they're willing to change. That's what I'd like to see. Right. But otherwise, in the long term, the medium term, I would definitely like to see a police that is responsive and accountable. So you they believe are not today responsive. So you believe that change has to begin with a police force. That's the key to the battle. But there will be others who will say. Uh, no, I uh, think there's a larger change point, that we're looking at. Point, there's point a larger taken. change you need, but you've got to start somewhere. You've got to start somewhere. Point taken. Of course, you need systemic societal change. It can't just be focusing on the police. Mukul Mudgal, would you agree that we all have to change, including judges, have to change in the way they see yeah, all... crimes against women? And what would you like to see change tomorrow? No, you are up. Uh, I would like to see uh, that the public prosecutors are appointed on merit. I would like to see that judges are posted on the posts which deal with such cases. And one thing I'd like to say about police reform. Yes. Please see the plight of the constable who yes. works 18 hours. He doesn't have police accommodation. He stays in the slums with the slum lords. I think if, uh, if, if his conditions are looked at, improved, he will become more sensitive. And finally, I'd like to say yes. your suggestion in the earth of the discussion yes. about a video camera recording the complaint yes. must be installed in all police station. It will have contemporaneous and unimpeachable evidence of how it was conducted. The sensitivity will grow when they know it's on camera. I think you make, you know, I think these are all suggestions. Hopefully these will come before the Home Minister and the Home Ministry and these will be taken up on priority basis. Himanshu Roy, as a serving police officer, what's the one like to see change? Rajdeep, it's Christmas, so I'm going to ask for the moon. The first thing I'd like to see tomorrow morning is a miraculous recovery of that brave young girl lying in Saftar Jung Hospital. Yes. And the second thing, and I'm going to venture to say this, yes. and I know I'm going to run foul of the bleeding heart liberals and the human rights activists, yes. is I want to see the death penalty fist. They don't have a right to live. I'm you, sorry about this. Okay, you want to see the death penalty for rape is in fact you're echoing what today Amitabh Bachchan in fact in an audio message has also said that there must be almost Talibani style justice but leave that aside because that is a contentious issue that Ra we will Rajib, try. Can I say one thing? Yes, yes. Rajib, can I, yes, yes, can I say Mujer. one thing? Yes. You see, even if, if even if the law is amended yes. and death penalty is for rape, yes. these offenders, till, till, the, till the law is amended, anybody who has committed an offense cannot be given larger sentence than life sentence. Okay. I think this all must be known. Okay, point taken, sir. I, I'm going to give Ms. Krishna the, the, I'm going to give Ms. Krishna the last word. You are one of those brave women who actually has suffered and has yet come out, revealed their identity, in fact, insisted that you reveal your identity. You obviously see yourself as a victim anymore, but you see yourself as an agent of change. Do you believe that is also one of the things that must change? We must stop stereotyping a rape uh, you know, someone who's, who, who gets raped as a zinda lash. We've got to get away from all those stereotypes as well. Rasteep, I am a survivor and I I am proud to be a survivor. The protests and anger that is displayed in Delhi is an, is an indication of the public outrage. Yes. And tomorrow morning on Christmas Day, what I would like to see, uh, the public is making a symbolic uh, uh, indication of their anger in the yes. same way if the politicians, yes. the, uh, the, uh, the government in power, the opposition leaders as a symbolic gesture yes. hands over one security guard of theirs back to the system so that they can be used the safety of women and children for the right. safety of the, of, of the women folk and the children in this country, that would be a great symbolic gesture that I would like to see tomorrow morning on Christmas Day. I think yes, since
means it is going to be Christmas Day. At the end of the day, what we all want to see, and I think Himanshu echoed all our thoughts, is we want to pray for the girl, the 23-year-old uh, who's battling for her life, and also pray for the yes. policeman who's battling for his life on a ventilator. Yes. Let's hope that both of them, the both of them recover sooner rather than later. What yes. better Christmas gift could this country get? On that note, hopefully positive. Thank you all to my panelists for joining me in this CNN IBN special. Up ahead is the India Park series. We are calling it LOC, the love of cricket. Thanks very much for joining. In our run-up to the new year, we are bringing you highlights 2012. Today we leave you with defining images of that rift between Anna and Arvind Kejriwal when Team Arvind and Team Anna formally split. Thanks very much for joining us. Good night. Goodbye. Mr. Salman Khurshid.